Hi everyone, I'm Nick and my partner is Parson and today we're going to talk to you about bioreactor landfills and here is a brief overview for our presentation. A 2018 snapshot from the EPA reveals nearly 300 million tons of municipal solid waste generated nationally with approximately 50% landfill. For scale, that's equivalent to 32 rows of typical front-end loader garbage trucks at full carrying capacity lined bumper to bumper from Los Angeles to New York. All in all, that's a lot of trash that ends up in our landfills. We use landfills to bury the waste with the traditional dry tomb practice, which essentially means encapsulating the waste mass to prevent and mitigate infiltration and exfiltration of fluids, which poses environmental concerns and subsequent human health hazards. While understanding these potential risks, bioreactor landfills operate with the philosophy of purposeful recirculation of fluid. Though unconventional, the quote-unquote wet principle of active fluid recirculation accelerates biostabilization and produces gases for energy generation. As an engineered system, bioreactor landfills carry the potential for a more sustainable yet economically viable approach to the waste problem. In the U.S., MSW landfills are regulated by Subtitle D of the Resource Conservation Recovery Act, or RECRA. Federal code permits leachate recirculation in accordance with 40 CFR 258.28, which restricts liquid addition to the reintroduction of leachate and condensation. Since bioreactor landfills require tightly controlled liquid addition and management to function optimally, federal regulations appear to bar them, but Subtitle D doesn't expressly prohibit amendments. So some states have interpreted the law in two ways. First, that no liquid addition is permissible except for the reintroduction of leachate and condensation. And the second, a more broad interpretation that prohibits the introduction of bulk liquid waste, but allows the use of chemical amendments like clean water. A uh, primary reason that was cited by states uh, for prohibiting bioreactor landfills was that they mostly use unlined landfills. Our presentation categorizes bioreactor landfill types into anaerobic, aerobic, hybrid, and partial. Common to all structures of bioreactors are a system of vertical wells and horizontal trenches that recirculate fluids and collect gases. Anaerobic type bioreactors have been traditionally operated because of potential for large volumes of gas production. It operates by circulating leachate to accelerate waste degradation by facilitating the growth of methanogenic bacteria, which releases methane that can be used for electricity generation. However, introduction of fluids in the waste matrix poses stability risks with decreased effective stresses. Also, as the waste degrades, the waste mass density increases, allowing for more waste capacity, which may damage the waste liner, especially if improperly installed. Another point of concern is the buildup of ammonia in leachate, which is why leachate nitrification is important for long-term maintenance. Aerobic bioreactors are of more recent interest in waste management. They operate by introducing oxygen into the landfill, typically by horizontal and vertical wells that are similar to those used for gas extraction, and they also utilize leachate recirculation. They are advantageous since research has shown that aerobic decomposition results in faster waste and leachate stabilization. Aerobic processes can break down organic wastes and ammonia that anaerobic processes cannot. They also don't produce methane or other foul odor gases that are typically associated with landfills and can achieve volume recovery during active filling. The main concern with aerobic bioreactors is landfill fires. The aerobic microbial respiration process is highly exothermic, releasing heat in an environment where oxygen fuel is intentionally being added, exacerbating fire risk. They can also emit nitrous oxide, which is a more potent greenhouse gas than methane. As the name implies, hybrid bioreactor landfills uses both aerobic and anaerobic phases to optimize the benefits from both decomposition processes. Aerobic degradation is the major method of decomposition during the initial phase as the waste is filled in the landfill, with large surface area exposed to air. Microorganisms then use the entrapped oxygen to break down organic matter to simpler polymers resulting in high carbon dioxide and low methane emissions. Simple monomers are anaerobically breaking down to a mix of organic acids. Methanogenesis then ensues using remaining carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and inorganic acids, releasing methane and lowering dissolved solid concentrations in the leachate. As previously mentioned for other bioreactor landfill types, some disadvantages are slope stability risks with decreased effective stresses, as well as the costs associated with uh, operating such a hybrid bioreactor. 
Some traditional MSW landfills utilize leachate and condensation recirculation, but not at the optimized levels of a true bioreactor landfill, and as a result, these partial bioreactor landfills only partially realize the benefits of their true bioreactor counterparts. Studies have shown that traditional MSW landfills with moisture recirculation achieve earlier waste and leachate stabilization, with the exception of ammonia concentrations. They produce an increased volume of landfill gas for a shorter duration, which could be utilized for energy or flaring. Uh, they reduce leachate treatment costs, and they achieve some airspace recovery. Since the moisture recirculation conditions aren't optimized, these landfills often develop preferential flow paths, so the bioreactor benefits aren't fully realized. They also need to have proper lining and leakage considerations since traditional MSW landfills are typically treated as a dry tomb. With the proper design and operation considerations, partial bioreactor landfills can realize cost savings from reduced leachate treatment, volume recovery, and a reduction in the time required for post-closure monitoring and maintenance. Aside from the different types of bioreactor landfills to pick from, there are also a number of design considerations for each. For example, due to the active recirculation of leachate, leakage control rightfully deserves some attention. Leakages can occur from a number of different reasons. Some examples are listed on the slide. Deciding soil cover type is an important factor because a material with too low of a permeability can cause leachate pooling that spreads laterally. On the other hand, if it's unintentionally too permeable, leachate can drain along the plane of the soil cover. Another cause is the characteristic of the waste matrix itself. For example, waste is highly anisotropic and has higher horizontal permeability. Lastly, the physical placement of trenches used matters, especially when considering the influence area of saturation. Many mitigation strategies exist for these potential leakage problems. Some are as simple as ensuring minimum slope to direct leachate drainage and placing the wells or trenches further away from the landfill surfaces to as complex as reassessing the volume of leachate that needs to be recirculated in such a way that the whole system itself is still economically viable. Traditional MSW landfills utilize a compaction philosophy that maximizes compaction effort to pack the maximum amount of waste into the smallest volume due to the high cost of landfill construction. But this philosophy doesn't carry over well to bioreactor landfills. Efficient waste packing results in increased specific weight of the waste, which is inversely proportional to hydraulic conductivity, hindering the movement of moisture. Compaction also contributes to anisotropy in the waste profile, which can lead to increased lateral movement of moisture, resulting in preferential flow paths and leachate seeps. Uniformity is key in early research shows that bioreactor landfills can settle two to three times faster than conventional landfills, so volume lost due to non-compaction can be recovered. Further research is needed in this area to optimize compaction effort while achieving the goal of enhanced waste degradation and volume recovery. Most bioreactor landfills utilize anaerobic processes to promote rapid waste stabilization and as a byproduct produce increased volumes of landfill gas when compared to a traditional MSW landfill. Since landfill gas is typically the source of foul odors and methane is a potent greenhouse gas, effective gas collection systems are critical. Techniques and systems for gas control are typically similar to traditional landfills, but since bioreactor landfills will produce landfill gas at a greater rate early in their life cycle, other techniques may need to be implemented at early stages. Some gas collection recommendations include collection from the leachate collection system, horizontal wells installed within the waste, additional surface collection, and increased collection pipe size. A well-designed gas capture system can lead to the opportunity for use in a landfill gas energy project and maximize greenhouse gas offsets, but poor design can have negative impacts to side slope and cover stability. Uplift pressure during the installation of geomembrane covers can lead to ballooning instability and soil loss. Bioreactor landfills typically have faster rates of waste decomposition than traditional MSW landfills leading to earlier stabilization of waste and leachate and reduced post-closure monitoring and care. Aerobic and hybrid decomposition lead to especially fast rates and can degrade organics and ammonia. The removal of hazardous organics is optimized in bioreactor landfills by 1. The stripping of volatile organics due to increased gas production, 2. Optimized conditions for biodegradation, and 3. The promotion of the immobilization of contaminants via humification. 
Recirculation of leachate results in improved quality, decreasing treatment requirements, and reducing risk of contaminant migration in the event of containment system failure. Whether bioreactor landfills are operated anaerobically, aerobically, or some hybridized combination of both, consistent monitoring is necessary to ensure operations abide by regulatory standards, which includes ensuring site safety and smooth operations. A few examples for monitoring is highlighted on the screen. From left to right, we have ground monitoring as a crucial aspect of landfills in general, bioreactor or traditional, because we need to ensure the ground quality is safe for use. The center of the landfill also calls for the need for monitoring, especially in aerobic landfills, because the exothermic process may cause internal fires. Lastly, a liquid treatment storage needs to monitor the quality of the leachate before recirculation to promote waste degradation, but also prevent high buildup of ammonia concentration. Engineered systems do not operate in a vacuum. The apparent benefits of such bioreactor systems should also be viewed from non-engineering perspectives, because despite successes in theoretical understanding, there are societal implications that need consideration and questions that should be included in the conversation. Landfills tend to be located closer to lower socioeconomic neighborhoods. So how do we weigh potential economic benefits with local communities that are disproportionately affected? Waste generation is also tied to socioeconomic status. So how do we hold those who produce overwhelmingly more waste more accountable? And lastly, bioreactor landfills are largely experimental. So how can we as engineers best advocate for policies that ensure a high threshold of safety, but also does not impede constant innovation? Bioreactor landfills offer the potential to revolutionize anthropogenic waste management techniques, but federal regulations are restrictive and potentially slow the speed of discovery and growth of knowledge from bioreactor landfills. There are many different types of bioreactor landfills, but the philosophy of recirculation remains central in operational procedures. The environmental risks and health hazards also remain, but there are mitigation techniques that can be used. Bioreactor landfills remain largely experimental, but with time, the body of understanding surrounding bioreactor landfills will grow, which hopefully alleviates stigma associated with landfills and ignites support for bioreactor landfills as an energy efficient and sustainable method for waste management. Thank you for your attention and we welcome any questions.